Oh my, it's Kelly White. Hey, it's Change Grand Pog. What are you up to? Thinking about changing the world. Uh, me too. We should do a show together. What would it be about? Let me show you. Hi, Hi, James. <laughs> Hi, Kelly. <laughs> Hi, honey. <laughs> Happy it. Day of the Dead to you. Happy Day of the Dead. Every day is dead for me, but thank you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey, you're speaking my language. <laughs> <laughs> it's our kind of it's our kind of day. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Did you have a good week? I had a good week. And strange weekend. I did a show on Saturday night at between twelve for Halloween, twelve to two in the morning, on um, with Lisa Gar, um, coast to coast. And uh, it was very strange because, well, no, it was a Friday, Friday night, Saturday morning, and I went right to bed at two o'clock in the morning and woke up at nine o'clock, eight eight thirty to walk my doggy, and I went around thinking it was Monday. I thought it was Monday. Oh my gosh. And um, uh, I, at 10 o'clock, a friend of mine comes over at 10 o'clock, got a massage at 10 o'clock on Sundays. And uh, the guy director said, James, I said, what are you doing on a Monday? And he goes, James, it's Sunday. I really, in my head, thought it was a Sunday. I meant Monday. I, I, I really missed the whole day, I think, because I wasn't used to being up that late. Well, working from midnight to 2 in the morning, that's hard. Hard work. It's I can't even work. Work. In the truckers. The truckers uh, were great. Got to say uh, hello to the truckers. Yeah. Oh, but that's so that good that you did that. That's a hard job. That's a hard yeah. job. It is a hard job. Oh and, and now you had an interesting weekend. You never told me about your weekend. How did it go? I had a very interesting weekend, actually. Yes. <laughs> I, I actually went to, I, I got my booster shot. You got I a got my booster shot. shot. So I got my booster shot. No reaction? No. At first, I got a little woozy, you know, okay. just a little woozy, and then nothing. Apparently, the booster shot is half the dose. Yes, that's right. So I actually was fine. I mean, I'll, t I'll say this. I rested all day yesterday, which was great. And I good. slept really well. Good. good so good. you look great. Thank you. I feel yeah. good. 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 Yes. So today um, is a really interesting day, too. Did you know today is National Gratitude Day? <sighs> Tell us more about that. Kevin. How cool is that? It's National Gratitude right. Month, actually, the whole month. Is wow. National Gratitude wow. Month. Wow. And what I think is so important about this is when we go through the astrology that we're going to go through about November's astrology, it's really all about transformation. And to me, the best way to lead through transformation is to have gratitude for everything. And it opens the door for everything, doesn't it, James? It's true. It's really, really true. To take the time out and to really have gratitude, appreciation, appreciation. Yeah every day i try every day to try to do that because in every little way too to help someone in some way to give something to someone to open someone's eyes to be kind to someone every day even on the telephone i do that with people and, and yeah. i'll tell you since this whole COVID thing now on the phone with people and it could be anybody it could be someone who's uh, gonna deliver something or a credit card company whatever. And I'll tell you, they really appreciate be, the being nice they love it they say yes. thank you be nice thank absolutely. you absolutely and, you know, gratitude is so good for our psychological health and our physical health and true. particularly our spiritual health. It's so, so true. Very, right. very true. Yeah, oh very, very true. But it's so interesting, too, because today is World Vegan Day, too. No, I didn't know that. World Vegan Day. Now, when did yeah. that? Wow. And it actually runs a whole month of November as well, which is interesting. It's interesting. And it's the harvest time and it's vegan time. So yeah. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Interesting time. So a lot of, a lot of good things are going on. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be in my kitchen as we speak, so it's been interesting. And how's that going for you? Yes, yeah, great. <laughs> oh, good. Yes. Good. I have no idea. Oh, <laughs> boy. Oh, boy. Journey. Yeah. Oh, my I, gosh. My spices will be out for this different alphabetical order than before. <laughs> well, you might have, it might be time to get new spices, too. Uh, probably. Okay. You know, it's always good to check your everything for expiration yes. dates. Absolutely. And I didn't realize this like a year ago. I was like, someone said, you, know, you got to check your expiration dates of everything. Oh, yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. I knew that. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Don is a huge expiration date guy. It's like, well, did you look at the date? Yeah. And I'm like, no, I actually didn't. But <laughs> you're like me. Yes. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, 
but anyway, it's but let's talk about November what's astrology. astrology. What's happening, Kelly? Oh uh, my gosh. It was no, a weird day for me. I don't know about anybody else, but it felt very strange. Oh my God. Well, this November is a huge transformational month. It's huge month it's an intense month it, we have an we have something that we have so many things going on in this november it's really complex october and, was pretty intense kelly right and october well was, yeah. going into november and then december so let's just say the next two months are pretty intense eclipse land it's eclipse. we're going to talk about that but november is one of the yeah. most intense months this year because there's a tight t-square formed between mars which is a planet of war saturn which is karma and uranus which is chaos and surprises and that t-square is it's always formed when there are two planets in opposition and a third planet that's squaring so it's a, and it lasts the whole month so you're going to feel is, what, is, what is an opposition here kelly which an opposite is uh, an opposition is when it's 180 degrees apart. Is that Mars, to Uranus, or or, Tor or Saturn? It's going to be Mars, Saturn, and Uranus. My, that's the that's the opposition right there. Mm -hmm. All right, it's it right there, and it's going to be it's going to feel almost like a pressure cooker for the month. <laughs> <laughs> Just giving you a heads up, if, folks. If it didn't yet, yeah. If okay. it didn't yet, it's going to make everybody a little edgy. And it makes us Edgy, edgier. What? Edgier. It makes us like look at ourselves and humanity. You know, when during your show today, James, you talked about everybody coming together as opposed to being separate. Yeah. That's you know, true. and that's, I think it's one of those times that we're really going to be looking at that, at um, humanity and, and how to get along. So, I'm also suggest in my, my school, in my soul care today, in my, my, my agenda show that I'm. Um, I was mentioning the skit class that the courses that I have, which I will in a second here too. But one of them mentioned about um, us being separate. I said, maybe I should do a course on uniformity, being uniform, Wouldn't coming together great? as one, because we need to come together as one. We have to. That I don't like the great. separations. It's not natural for us to be separate. Right. Humans should be one. Humans need to be together. You can have right. dislikes and you know not not agree on things. That's that's fine. It keeps us different, but. We've got to respect everyone, and everyone's going to realize we're all the same. We just have a different different type of belief systems, perhaps. But it doesn't mean that my belief system is better than your belief system. It's just my belief system, right. and that's the way we got to look at it. One thing isn't better than the other; it's just different. Mm -hmm. But you know, we're all the same, and I don't care what people's skin color is, what language they speak, whether it doesn't matter. We're all the same. Believe the same color. We're all the same. It's just it's, yeah. we got to start celebrating that. But mm. you know, we're the same. We're different. I but, I agree. I totally Nobody agree with that. Is. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to work on that. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. So in addition to, in addition to this T square, that's going to be, make things intense. We have our first series of eclipses. We're going into eclipse season and we're going to be in eclipse season in Taurus, uh, Scorpio. And that all begins on, yeah, on the 19th, which I'm going to talk about okay. in a minute. But eclipses represent like quantum leaps into higher states of consciousness. And so they tend to bring faded events. They also are geared to speed up our spiritual evolution. Interesting. Right? So lunar eclipses, which is one we're going to be gearing up to on November 19th, they bring endings and they're considered points of closure. So, huh. so yeah, solar eclipses bring new beginnings and points of um, new opportunity which is really very interesting. So some of the aspects, and I'm just, there's so many aspects to talk about in November, but I'm going to hit the, just the three that I think are really important for right this moment. Okay. And the first one is we have on November 4th, we have a, a new moon and it's in Scorpio. Okay. New moon in Scorpio and it opposes Uranus and Uranus is retrograde in Taurus at this time. And also Scorpio, the new moon is in Scorpio, the sun is in Scorpio, and Mars is in Scorpio, all on November 4th, which is what is Thursday, I think. Yeah, Thursday. Thursday. So what this means is it it's like people struggling for their independence. It's going to be time to express yourself, but it's going to be an intense time. So just watch how you express yourself because it's kind of it could be explosive on that new moon. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It's it's the something. Emotions and, and Scorpio is a very emotional sign. So it's a lot of emotions, careful. James. A lot of emotions. Be very careful Thursday. It's a full yes. moon. I mean a new moon. Yeah, it's a it's a big one. Scorpio tail can bite you, can sting you. Right. 
but it also yeah. brings up unconscious things. You know, it's, it's kind of it's, it's the highest spiritual sign of the zodiac. Highest spiritual. So you can, absolutely, this is where all of this is taking us all to, down the road to be in a higher spiritual place. No yeah. doubt about it. Um, now, interesting enough, on November fifth, Venus goes into Capricorn. Now, normally Venus stays in a sign for about thirty days, but this is going to stay until. March of 2022, four months. So let me explain a little bit of Venus in Capricorn because I think it's important here. It brings, so Capricorn is no nonsense and Venus is the planet of responsibility uh -huh. and Venus is love, you know, and, and, and love and beauty, but it brings in a romance. It, it brings security, longevity, stability. It, it makes us pay attention to being frugal. It makes us pay attention to money. Um, in, in a relationship. Now, here's what I do want to say about this. If you interrupt, can we find the relationships with the sun? Well, that's what I want to go with. So okay. if you are in, yes, you can, it would be a okay. practical relationship if you find it now. Okay. Do you know what I mean? The person would be, they'd be. That's practical. fine. My age. Yeah, go on. Right. But and if you're in a healthy relationship, that's great. But right. if you are in an affair I just want to say this, if you're having an affair or about to have an affair or in the middle of an affair, that's going to make this time very challenging because the person you're having the affair with is going to want you to leave your spouse because of this practicality thing. And you might be thinking, no, I'm not going to. So it could be a whole game changer for un, uh, relationships that are not out in the open. I'll say it like that. <laughs> yeah, a very intense time for relationships. And I could go on and on about the squares but the, that are coming up, but I'm get, we'll do that another time. But I do want to talk about November 19th. And that's the last thing I want to talk about, which is a full moon lunar eclipse in Taurus. I'm going to be back is, next week, so we can talk about that. We'll be back next week and we'll talk about it. But it's a big deal, this eclipse that's coming up for us, because it's going to help us. Um, it brings a lot of change for our lives. Eclipse the 19th or full moon? It's a full moon lunar eclipse wow. on the 19th. Wow. It's a big deal because it starts a whole new pattern wow. uh, of Taurus Scorpio as opposed to the Gemini Sagittarius. Yeah, it's two years of that. Wow. Like, oh, this is a, an important month. Wow. So there wow. you go. We'll talk more about it on my Thursday show, and then next week we'll talk about it, James. Yeah, because my head is spinning. I know. I know. <laughs> wow. I, I get it. <laughs> wow. So wow. let's talk about Day of the Dead. Day of the Dead, or, or All Saints Day in some religions. I grew up a Catholic and it was All Saints Day. What does that Just, mean exactly, All Saints I, I, Day? I never really understood All Saints oh. Day, but I, I assume you pray for the saints and they help you. Okay. All Saints Day. And there's All Souls Day, which is Day of the Dead. All Souls Day, praying for souls that were in purgatory when we were Catholic, which means you pray for them, they go to a higher level. It's interesting, mm. isn't it? So, and Day of the Dead, from... Um, from my experience of knowing my limited experience and knowledge of it, is celebrating those who have passed to their side. And it's not just, it's several days. It's like Halloween to the 2nd of November. And there's altars that are built and there are parties that are done. And there's some people make incredible, incredible monuments to people that pass over, putting people's photographs all around the monuments. And it's, it's pretty big all around the world. Mexico, I know, probably the biggest, maybe in Latin America's yeah. countries. In South America, South America as well. They talked about it. You know, it used to scare me, James, until I started doing some research on it. It's the skulls scared me, but it's just the opposite. They have the opposite effect on you. It's a good thing, and it's what's bring you luck, of course. Good luck. Mm -hmm. so what did you find in your research? Well, I found that it's supposed to, you know, we celebrate the person in our life that's passed away, and that you invite that person to come, and their favorite foods will be. In fact, there's a really cool bread that they make. Renee, can you show us that bread, which I thought was so neat. It's kind of reminiscent of challah wow. bread, but yeah, it's, it's like a like bread. a yeah, it's like challah bread. It's but it's got sweet, it's sweet on top, and then those are bones. They actually make bones, and as Jane said, James said they have the skeletons up there, which are uh, representative of your, our loved ones, and they invite the loved ones. Sometimes James, they open the windows and the doors to invite that spirit in. Oh yeah, they use candles. They also many times at the table they'll have an empty seat and a plate ready for them to the, for their place right there to eat with them. So, it, yes. And they are there. I mean, it doesn't take one of the human days that they're coming only on this day. They're around us all the time. But right. I think it's more for the human to celebrate, to remember them. And I think a great way of remembering them, and I was talking about this the other day, 
is many different things. For instance, um, celebrate them by doing something in their your life that they've always wanted to do in their life, right? You know, make, maybe one of their wishes fulfilled. Um, I so, love that idea. Yeah? Ma yeah. And making a list of ways that they taught you, things they taught you that you wouldn't have known if you mm -hmm. hadn't interacted with them in your life, whether it was a child, baby, child, a grown up, right. friend, you know, a loved one. I've had a lot of um, spouses that have died that they'll tell me in a reading, tell my wife she's got to go back. She's got to go on that cruise. Yeah. You know, like they would all have had tickets to a cruise and the wife is like, no, I don't want to. And he's like, no, you got to go. What about the other night, Kelly? I did my demonstration. And oh, let's talk couples. about that. <laughs> and things wow. that came through. And it was um, a girl's husband who hung himself in the backyard yeah. mm -hmm. of the house. And um, it was a really important reading. Really that important was a really reading. important really had some, some mm -hmm. incredible evidence and he was very, very sorry about the whole thing. And, mm -hmm. and it was really amazing. And then someone else came through and it was her father. It was her and father and her father had died father like that for her mother a week before. Week before. Absolutely. And the mother was sitting in the kitchen and cause he mm -hmm. talked about mopping the floor. He was watching her mop the floor yep. right before the show started. Yep. And the mother comes on, she's, I was just mopping the floor. We were just talking about him. And that was, that's that was an extraordinary, and I, I really believe that you saved that family because that was a extraordinarily difficult situation that the that family a, found themselves in. Two deaths within a month. I mean, that was yeah, crazy. that's a lot. And and the way the person left was rough. I mean, you were so great with that family. And there was another man that you were really great with. It looked like he was. Paul. He lost his, his name wife. was Paul. He lost his wife, and this is was clearly not his thing. No, he was, he was must very have been brain, shocked. engineer, oh. mechanic. So he's, they're always around you. You know, right. not, they, have, they have the dead. They're always around us all the time. Yes. Well, that was amazing. And my favorite, though, was the woman that in the lime green pantsuit. She was fabulous. She was great. She loved her outfit. She loved to dress up. She loved to dress. Mm -hmm. She loved to jewelry. Very uh, proper. Had her hair done. I think it was on Tuesdays <laughs> or Thursdays. Had her hair done. Had it looked just right. And then she said something about, and then you wanted me to wear those pantsuits. And you dragged me to... EJ Corvettes, whatever it was, a Corvette store, and you in, in I think it was like '68, and you uh, forced me to get me lock right. that lime green uh, pantsuit <laughs> to her daughter, who was understood everything she was saying. It was right. so detailed. She was so funny. It was, was hysterical. So she was a real card. It was great. Oh, that was so great because our loved ones are always with us. They're and always with us. It's they're just, always with us. The day that they just celebrate them and, and, and celebrate in ways you never expected them. Um, how does they change your life? You know, the dead always leave right. gifts behind, but we always have to have the courage to open up that gift and find out what's inside for us. So true. So really I have a question here from this. Mark Brevard asked this question. He said, do we always cross right over or do some spirits remain earthbound until they are ready to fully transition? So this is very interesting because I was just answering this Friday night, Saturday morning when I was on the the, the show with Lisa Gar. Mm. Okay, it was the same question. Um, and, and what came up, with it, which is, is is really how I answered it. Which which, listen, I, I, there are different thoughts about this. Um, there are some thoughts that I have talked to mediums and they said, well, we're the earthbound ones because we are. We're down. We're earthbound. We can't go on. And there are those who say, well, why would they stay here? Because there's a spirit world right there. The loved ones are there. That's home. And they know that. So why wouldn't they? And I believe that too. But I also believe there could be an aspect, which I did a show on called Ghost Whisperer, where there might be an emotional component left behind. And I know from people's mindset that the mind is the soul, the soul's mind. And within that mindset, if there's a mother who dies in childbirth, in her mind, she might think, I've got to be closer to my kid here on the earth than mm -hmm. in the spirit world. And that's what she might stay there. Or a man who was um, going to work was hit by a train and uh, he might realize that I was body members. My wife doesn't know I'm dead and she doesn't know where the life insurance policy is. I got to uh -huh. tell her. Or another one could be uh, someone who was raised very religiously and when they pass out of the body, they feel I can't go to that light or tunnel because I'll go to hell because of the things I've done. Mm. So there are all those different things. And I learned that with Mary Ann Winkowski from Ghost Whisper. She was an uh, uh, expert we had on earthbound spirits. And uh, she used to actually go around restaurants. And I was with her in houses and tell you who was, and around the Universal lot we did this. It was pretty wow. amazing. And she'd tell me who was haunting it, who was sitting there and who was sitting there and, and what they needed. And many times when um, I was witnessing when she did this, and this is what the, the spirit wanted. We told them we would do it, and they left. Wow. Um, so I, th I think the mind the mindset many times. Uh, you know, it's the same thing with us. I mean, if someone doesn't believe, there are so, such a skeptic, and they don't believe in this. And even if you 
give them great messages. They still might not believe it's where their mind is set at. It's very true. The story I told the other night, which I'll tell again, I've told it here, but it's a great story that really uh, demonstrates it very well. When I was giving a reading, you've heard this many times, to a, uh, giving a reading to a girl in the audience and her aunt came through and speaking about things for, that the aunt would know, knew about her. And out of the corner of my eye, I saw a spirit man coming toward me and his arms were folded. And I knew that it was this girl in the audience, her father would pass over. I just knew it. And I said telepathically, I said, do you want to communicate with her? And he said, with his arms folded, why would I want to do that? I didn't believe in this in life. Why would I believe in it now? And, and he watched the process of the communication and he could see how she was changing. And then he tried it out. And I'm sure the guides pushed him to do this. I'm yeah. sure they did. And, and they pushed him to, and he tried it. And it was incredible. He got through great messages and freed him up. It freed his mind up. He said, I love you to his daughter. He was never able to really say, I love you to her. And it was just an amazing experience for everybody in the audience and only wow. them. And it freed him up to do other things, to go to other levels and realize there are other vistas to see and other things to experience. So that was that was nice. So wow. that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. So, so if they have a fixed idea in their head, then they may stay for a bit. Eh, stay, be be the space for a mindset for a little yeah. bit. Um, but there are always those in the spirit world that are rescue, what we call right. spirit rescuers or those who help them over. Right. You know, I think the more of us tend to go over to stay behind. I, I do really too. do. Yeah, me too. I, really do. I met Princess Diana when she left, and I was going to give her a reading actually. And she came back afterwards, you know, I think it was months afterwards, and I was in contact with her. And she said, I had a chance, I had a choice. I was above my body. I was really, and she was into mediumship for years and astrology and psychics. It was, yeah. And she was warned three different times. Three different practitioners told her not to go to Paris. At the, wow. you know, they said, don't go. Then it's going to be end of August, beginning of September. Don't, don't go. And that's exactly what happened. I was supposed to give her a reading before that. It didn't happen. Wow. And, and when she had a choice to go back to be, um, to go back into the body or to be in the spirit world. And because she was alive when they put her in that ambulance. You know that. Yes. Just saying. Yeah. Just saying. And, um, Really, what she knew that she thought I could help my boy more from the other side than I could here in this earth, oh. and she was right, and she has. I believe she has, um, and I don't think the queen is going to be around much longer. By the way, I know she's not feeling well, but I don't think she. I think she's got kind of one foot out the door. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I just have a feeling with her. I think she's she's done. I think she's she's had it. I don't think she wants to be around. I don't know. Well, that so. would be a big change for this November. That makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. Then that there you go, and she's a, she's a Taurus. Right on that that uh, point. There you go. That that could be a. I think that's it. A big deal. Know. I'm telling yeah. you, it's going to be a, a yeah, big change. Wow. I think for that. Wow. A lot of people wow. are going to go out in November. I think a lot of people. Yeah. yeah, I've always thought of November as a day, not just because it was Day of the Dead, but I've always thought of it as a transitional month. It, it's Kelly. You know, it, it has been. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I, since I've started this work 40 years ago. November 1st through February, then the, toward the end of February, it's transition time. To completely. Transition. Mm -hmm. I was known that. I lost both my parents during that time. A lot of elderly passed that time. A lot. Yes. It's, a, it's an exit point. It's exit point. It's an exit point. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Big exit point. One of the biggest of the year. So if we talk <clears throat> about the transition of death, you know, and to explain to people what happens in that process. So, okay. When the, yeah. your last breath, yeah, so everything is breath, really. Breath is life. And and really, um, um, it's interesting because I wrote about this in Talking to Heaven, uh, Alzheimer's, dementia, that sort of thing. People wonder what happens. And, and it's hard to make a blanket statement or explanation because everybody's experience is different. Yeah. But as a whole, I will tell you that people are usually aware when they're in the hospital bed or in a bed laying down there in a coma, they're usually aware on some level what's going on. And I know my, my father was very aware. I saw his head above his body out here when he was in a coma. So I know that they're aware. I I, I told that story about Alice, Alice about um, Audrey Meadows when I did when I helped her over, and yes. uh, and she was she passed the next morning, and then I went to help her over, and the next morning she would passed. And before I looked, you know, I left her hospital room, I, the bed. I turned. She she there was a smile on her face. She had had that smile. Interesting. I mean, so they do hear us. They they're very very aware of things that go on. Um, again, depending on the their belief system, I, I think I think the best thing we could do and end of life doulas don't to get the celebration they need. There should be more of them because mm -hmm. you know, we can help coming into this world. What about leaving this this body? We can right. help you know, coming here, but 
you know, leaving, we should get just as much help from the living part of people. And it's just, and I've been around it, you've been around it, I've worked in a hospital. It's easing their mind. It's, it's mm -hmm. easing them. It's, and, and I can say that before they helped her over and it wasn't yes, even in yes. person. It was in a, mm -hmm. le another level of awareness with her, a meditative level. And it helped her. I really helped her because the mind continues on. Right. It's the body that gets messed up, but the mind is very alert, very aware. Mm -hmm. So if you can help them that way and just let them know it's okay. As I said with Debbie, it's like, it's like a feather. It just breathe in and slowly breathe out like a wave and just ride that feather, ride that. It's very calming and very soft. We do it every night we go to sleep. We leave our right. bodies every single night we go to sleep. In this case, we're just more aware of it. We're aware of leaving the body. I had that near-death experience. Maybe I've had near-death experience where they're aware of leaving the body. It's, it's painless. It's painless, no pain yeah. At all. No pain at all yeah. with death. It's something to look forward to. It's a very natural process. Right. We've, done, we've done it millions of times before. So. It's interesting. My father said right before he passed, he said, I'm going to fly out now, babe. I'm going to fly out now, babe. So interesting. So here's a question from, I think this is a good question from, um, where did it go? I just had it. It goes so quickly here. Um, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. It was about suicide. Oh, is suicide, when you pass from suicide, is that, how does that work? Oh, well, it, it, it all depends on, the, again, same thing, the individual. I mean, I, I've had uh, many, many hundreds of suicide cases. I've, yeah. I remember one where the, they're pretty aware. They're, they're all aware when they leave the body, no doubt. Whether they shoot their heads off or whether they hung themselves, it doesn't right. if they're aware. You know, there's no pain involved. So even if someone mm -hmm. takes a gun to their head, they're blacked out before that impact happens. Mm -hmm. and, and same thing in a car accident say, or, right. or jumping from a cliff. The, the God in this wondrous way, the universe is created like a shutoff valve is the way I can explain it. You right. Know, is, and then they don't feel anything until they're out of the body. And they're looking down saying, what happened? Oh, my God, what happened? And they go, oh, my God, I actually did it. I actually pulled the gun. Or actually, I remember this one guy, Peter, his name was, this was many, many years ago. I might have told you a story. Um, when I was doing individual readings and um, in Hollywood, when I was living in Hollywood. And this lady came to me. I knew nothing about her. I'm sitting there. And she's a lovely lady from South Africa. And I was sitting there. And all of a sudden, I'm aware of my mind's eye. I'm seeing very much clairvoyantly a man going to his backyard. His name is Peter. So there's a man named Peter. He showed me he walked up back and there's a big oak tree. And he climbs and puts a rope around and said, and he's going to hang himself. And he does. And then I felt like I was, I felt that death condition very clearly. I felt mm. popping at the top of my head. And the first uh, expression that I had, first thing, it was he goes, oh my God, my parents are going to find me like this. And it's usually the people left behind that they worry right. about the people who are going to left behind, which happens. That kind mm. of, yeah, so we can help them by sending them love and prayers, and that will help them. If you send them love, it helps them to love themselves and help right. them to heal themselves with that condition. And they don't go to hell. They don't there's, go to hell. There's no such thing as hell. That's no. fictitious. Mm -hmm. There is no hell. Um, hell can be hell is what you make it with your thoughts. So if they're obsessed about how they treated somebody and how badly and they left behind, that can be their hell. But if we send them love and prayers and forgiveness, absolutely. They can forgive we can send them to heaven. Well, you know, it's so interesting because you teach a class. I want I want to talk about this. So in this transformation time and with yeah. the month of gratitude, I mean, yeah. forgiveness has got to be a huge thing. And you have one of your classes, which blows me away, is called Forgiving the Unforgivable. Yes. And I know it's, you guys, you're doing um. A I have a sale going on right now. It's, called, it's the biggest sale we have every year. And it's a spirit mm -hmm. sale, we call it. It's 25% off. And there's a, oh, there's a code, Spirit25. Uh, it's twenty five percent. Any course or certification course in the school, JVP School, Miss School Arts, any course. Spirit twenty five is a code you usually check out. And as I talked about today, this morning, all the different courses are. I was going into details, but yes, there's there's some great great courses in there. One is forgive the unforgiven, and I mean every one of these courses are thorough. Just like you know, I check things out and research, and and many of them are channeled. And I, I personally, my family life. Um, had a situation where I couldn't forgive somebody for years. Mm -hmm. And I had to go and look, why couldn't I? And um, I found all these different reasons, excuses, scenarios, different things came up, childhood things, traumas. And um, I was able to see that from another person's point of view, another perspective. And that really helped me to forgive. Mm -hmm. And we need to forgive because if we don't forgive, it blocks the energy from flowing through us. Because let's yeah. say it's an emotional, it's an emotional um blockage mm -hmm. and, and i've done many readings where people uh, you have hearts oh, yeah. are blocked the center is blocked because they can't forgive it's still in their heart their heart is aching well, and 
when what you... happens is their vital life force gets stuck. And exactly. then everything that they're going to do going forward is dependent on that energy that's stuck. So exactly. why can't this happen? I'll tell you why. Because you're not open. Why are you not open? And you could go back and back and back and then trace where it is. But I think that the idea of forgiving the unforgivable in a class is phenomenal. It's a great one. It's and a great one. You're by great yourself. Class. It's by yourself on the computer. It always be with you. All these classes are by yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I have 20, 35 videos or whatever. Each class is a different amount of videos and homework and exercises and meditations. But that's it's a very, very good one. It's an excellent one. Well, and the other one that, I mean, they're also interesting, but life after loss. Because so many of our viewers have had loss. <laughs> Life after loss is, um, I just had my book. Here it is. No, that's another book. Um, uh, Healing Grief, my book, Healing Grief, which is a great book. It's my great third book. book ever. And it's really a course based upon that, how to grieve in a constructive way and a, in a healthy way. And really what grief is. Grief is not just for the dying, which it is. Right. We can grieve, but it's things that are over in our lives, too. They say goodbye to certain right. things. Like oh, my gosh. It could be a divorce. It could be a, a career change. Career. Uh, could be a home. could be anything. Like, Goodbye to your old kitchen furniture. I'm making the idiot. I'm you know what? Right that's now. true. But that's true. No, it's true. It's things you become used to. It's, it's yes. throwing out old clothes. Things, right. you know, cleaning things out of your house. You're an emotional attachment to. There's all this grief with all these little things. And we've got to honor that grief. Mm -hmm. And so this course is about honoring the different types of griefs in our life in a healthy way. And, and realize what it's teaching us. So that's what that course is about. That's, I think that's great. Course. So one. Steve K has a question here. Just as we have different spiritual levels in life, do we have different levels in death? Yes, different, different levels, different realms, yeah. spaces and places. There are different realms. In the Bible, it says my father has a house with many mansions, which means really the various spiritual levels that exist based upon your thoughts, words, and deeds. So um, if you're a very high-minded, loving being, you'll go to that level, which is that which you gravitate to of that that's made of those principles right. and and if you don't and you're just someone who's um a greedy a egomaniac uh, into hurting people you'll go on that level Absolutely. and like Fox likes you'll have other people who are just like that just like that on that level mm -hmm. and um you cannot go um up until you've earned it by tr doing loving things kindness right. compassion right um, you can go down sure you can go down just like yeah. spirits come down to us they come down the ones not and remember like our guides are also being fed by beings that are higher than them and then those right. that are higher than them so it's like a step me down kind of process right. so it's That's always something. growing and growing and growing always expanding and growing and yeah i mean and Yes, very much so. Very much I, ha I have to answer this question. This is a good one. Karen Bend Benditini Roberts. She says, hi, guys. You answered a question a few months ago of why I have dreams. I'm angry at my mom. She has passed, but I'm still having those dreams, and she's mean to me, and I'm crying and angry at her. I hate it. It's so troubling to me. Okay, Karen, this is a great month for you. <laughs> it's a great month. You really have to look. You have to look at your anger towards her. Really, it's your dream. It's your dream, honey. So... I have a feeling you're going to have to be, you know, step into it a little bit. She's going to have to and own it's it. okay. Hmm? She's going to have to own it. Own it. Yeah. Yeah. And just go into it. It's okay. It's okay to be angry. And then work through it. It's very, it's very true. Hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to find my, a class for her. <laughs> oh, good. Good. Please. Because Please. It's uh that's a good one because uh, yeah it's, it's 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 a good one. Sandra Coral, uh, do we keep the same spirit guides throughout our life? For me, yes. James, no. What? Well, why did you say that? Because you have <laughs> new guides. You have new guides all the time. No, we we all do. We we all do. We change guides. If you know, we have certain guides that will stay with us for, for a lifetime and lifetimes. There are those mm -hmm. that lifetimes, one lifetime, and there are guides that change um, depending on the type of work that we're involved in, the that's new true. work we're involved in. Yeah, I guess I have different guides so I'm doing a lot of different work. <laughs> <laughs> Garden guide, now I have a house guide, <laughs> probably. I don't know, Hazel. But no, we do. And, um, but uh, yeah, I guess I, I well, yeah, yeah, I, they, I don't know. They change, but they, it depends on what we're doing, I think. We draw that to us. Absolutely. So this is a good question. Carol uh, Herta. One thing, one thing that the lady who just asked about the class uh, who, who's having oh, a good. dream problem. Yeah. 
Uh, 28 days of total transformation would be the course you should take. Oh, perfect. 28 days of total transformation. Mm -hmm. That way you go within yourself, see what traumas are still from your childhood. I know it's something from your childhood that you and your mother had, yep. that maybe mom didn't resolve something with your mother, and you're yep. still holding on to it. But that's it. But 28 yeah. days of total transformation would be good for you. Okay. Yeah. And I liked what you said earlier, too, in your in your um, uh, show this morning or this afternoon. You said you talked about how you can also view from the mother's perspective or the father's perspective what was their life like exactly it, and what that does is it opens up a dialogue and it opens up compassion and empathy understanding and understanding, understanding. why they did a certain thing why they behaved a certain way because from this perspective that's why now, now if you were in that position you might have done the same thing right. so it's looking from all different ways and then you have a better understanding of why they acted out a certain way right Okay, so Carol Herta Rodriguez Fowler, can you connect with someone immediately after they pass? I think it depends on how they pass. I think it depends on how they pass. So if they're they're busy passing with something traumatic and they're not they're in that middle stage of not, you know, like let's with what Princess Diana before. Yeah. I, I don't think we're gonna call her in right away because she's probably still in the process of work, working right. on what's going on, what's happening. So um that being said, again, it depends on the mindset, depends on the way they died um their belief system after they've passed over um, what's the story with gordon hickinson that was a great story it wasn't with his mother or with he well, was i had one where i was going to a okay. demonstration okay and, and a girl i brought to a girl's mother in the audience that, and she said my mother's not dead i said oh she's right here and i gave her information because she, she just died she goes well then it must have just happened and it happened from when the girl left the house to when she came to my demonstration that passed wow. away we found that during the break, the intermission, your mother indeed passed. Now, I would never have done that, but the mother came right through to say, I passed. And right. Right. Which is amazing. So that's, you know, that, that can't that, happen. That did happen. It happened. Again. And then right. once I used to do 30 people in my living room when I first started, I remember it was a Saturday night, and a man's partner came through. Um, he died of AIDS, and he came through. Um, he died Thursday. Thursday night, and he came through Saturday night, two nights later. Wow. We talked about the pass on the uh, the doorway, the lights going to the doorway, that they just finished changing the pathway lights the day before he died. Unbelievable. So happened, yeah. So they wow. can't. It depends how prepared they are, yeah. um, what their belief system is, how great a communicator they are, they really yeah. how open we are. Wow. So Susie writes, says, hi, James and Kelly. I understand we are always greeted by our loved ones when we pass. But if we are on a different spiritual level than some, will that will we be reunited with those who are not believers? Certainly, certainly. So if you're a believer, you can go to those people who are not believers. You can see them for sure. They, you know, I, I, I don't think it's I mean, love is really what the answer is. So that, that energy of love is still there. They love you. You'll you'll be with them. Doesn't mean you're gonna hang out with them all the time, perhaps, because their their belief system is different. But that love still continues. You'll still see them. Oh, they might not be comfortable in that certain place that you are, and that makes sense here on this earth. You know, we all live in different cities and states and countries, and some right. places we're very comfortable in the place we're not. It goes along with the the couple. This happens all the time. The couples that were married, and then one of them passes over, and the remaining one on the earth marries somebody else. And this has happened to me. I went. <laughs> There's a so lady. Many. She was married five times. <laughs> and I swear to you, it was one of the funniest experiences. <laughs> I did a reading for it, and I don't know how I got to this reading. It was something private reading back in Studio C, California. The lady was in her bed, and she was she was alive in bed. Maybe she was terminal. And her daughter, um, I got to get reading on her bedside, and she could communicate. She was fine. And I remember bringing through one, and then two, and then another, <laughs> and f five husbands I brought through. I'm like. Well, you know, this is a joke. Five husbands. And one was Sherman, one was Oscar, one was Mark. I forget. The, so it was, it was weird. And then. <laughs> did I, did she have a, a favorite? Later, well, <laughs> I, a year later, um, she came in to me. She, the daughter told me she passed. Hmm. And the mother came through. I gave her the daughter. The mother said, she said, James, you got it all wrong. And I'm just disgusted with you. This is her personality. <laughs> you can imagine. So loved her. <laughs> I said, well, you, you mean discuss with me? She goes, I said, what I just want to know what husband you're with. And the daughter did too, you know. And she said, Oh, the hell with them all. She goes, I, I'm with my old boyfriend from high school. We never got to really ex experience each other. And she goes, I'm really upset with you. I said, What? She goes, because you didn't really tell me how great it was here. You weren't you oh, wow. never told me it was gonna be this great. When you said it was great over here, you didn't tell me it was gonna be this great. 
Wow. Was, that's, what you said. that's an amazing thing yeah. to say. Yeah, it was great. She was great. Wow. Yeah, the whole five husbands. She wasn't with any of them. And it and it goes with that. Um, I've had many times they say, well, there's an affinity that you have that you go yeah. to that person. So let's say your parents were 50 years, they wouldn't necessarily be want to be together on the other side. They can see right. each other. It's like we can see each other, we, but right. they don't have to live together, they don't have to be together, they do their own thing, or they can share life together over there. They have new partners if they want to. It all depends <laughs> on the soul, what the soul connection is. See? So true. Susan Winzel, are, let me see, are there souls floating around the astral plane that don't know they have died and how do they get help? Wow. Um, well, I would say there are those floating around the earth plane that they're used, they call them human beings and they don't realize that they're alive. <laughs> Kelly and I talk about this all the time. Oh they're yeah, all, walking all, stem brains. Yep. And, and they're all around us. They're all around us. So it makes sense if they leave the body. It could be those on this level. I know the mm. astral plane, but you ever want to call it that. They're 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 unaware they're dead. But um, I, I think that maybe exists. But I do believe there are those that help them over. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, there's oh, a great testimony of life by Helen Greaves, and mm. uh, that's a very good book about a lady. The story in England, and she realized she was passed and. Used to go to this house, this cabin all the time, and um, and used to start her fire, her daily routine, and putting the kettle on, having the fire in the wood, and in, in the fireplace, and and making him this and that, taking a walk, and and one day she realized that um someone said they kept like, trying to get to her that she had passed, and she didn't understand what they were talking about until one day then I guess a friend who she had known very well in her life came with this other person and said hello. She was. Beatrice, what are you doing here? She goes, well, I moved on, and you moved on. She goes, no, I'm back in my house. She goes, no, in your head you are. In your mind you think you are, but you're actually not. You're outside of that. Come with me and I'll show you. And she showed her all these different things, Beatrice, how she could think of a place and go and float there, be there, instead of walking there. And she showed her all these wonderful things. And she goes, how remarkable. I'm I'm free, to leave. I'm free to leave. She goes, yeah, you can leave anytime you want. Your mind kept you chained to that little place. Your mind kept you chained, but you're free to go anytime you want. Oh, interesting. <laughs> oh, my God. Elizabeth Robles, if you dream about a past loved one, is that ast oh, astral traveling? I, uh, well, what do you think, Kelly? No, not necessarily. I mean, if you dream about, well, it, often if we're dreaming about a loved one, we are with them. So, yeah. and we're going to do a show on astral projecting and ap astral right. traveling. Yeah. Um, but I think like Kelly said, I think it's, it's when you're with them on the other side. We go, we all go to the spirit world at night and go to sleep. Yes, but it's their loved ones, and and sometimes we remember that experience in a conscious way when mm -hmm. we wake up. And that's I call those crossovers because we're right with them. It seems so real. So that's different than astral projection. That's a little yeah. bit different. A little different. So visual memories ask when they pass when people pass unexpectedly after being what out of their. What does that mean? Pardon me? What does that mean? You when mean, they pass, you, the when human they, doesn't expect them. Or yes. they don't. On a soul level, they might know. On a human level, they ah, might know. Okay. Can they sense their loved ones? Can they see them? Can they feel their family's emotions? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah, you're still the same. You don't just you don't stop like shut off, shut down. You don't become shut when you leave the body, it's just the opposite. You don't shut down, you become alive. Right, you right. So much more alive than you, the essence, the effervescence just like there you are. You're a part of everything and everyone, and you're overwhelmed with this feeling of love and, and, and compassion, and, and you want your loved ones to know that you're alive. Mm. And, and it's just so, you know. I, I don't want to judge anything, but the older I get, the more re <laughs> the more readings I do, I become more and more aware of how how difficult it is for the spirit people when they when they when they, when they become figments of people's imaginations, when they think that people don't think they exist mm -hmm. and they do exist. They throw them in the ground. They burn them. That's not right. them. That's not them. That's, how disrespectful is that? Well, yeah. that's why I think that Day of the Dead is so important, actually, because then exactly. you bring them back in and you cook their favorite meals. It makes them feel a part of it, a yeah, part of, of that's life. That's right. That they haven't yeah. left. They're, they're they so haven't left. It's still part of your life, which they are. And I do. I agree with you, Kelly. It's a great holiday to celebrate that because there, there's no death. There is no, no. death. I love day. this um, comment. Deb Cade said, I knew when my mother passed away, her spirit passed right through me. I was in another room and I told my husband that my mom just passed. And then there was a knock at the door and my sister said that mom was gone. And that's when they knew, but that's so true. I know that experience of when the energy just passes right through into yeah. your system. It it's unbelievable. Me, me, me too. Mom, it happened to you too? My mom did. Yeah. Well, she wasn't, 
she it was her day, her day had passed over and it was about a week afterwards and i was in la i went back to new york for funeral and this is how poor i was i went to macy's to get a jacket for the funeral oh. i got the jacket and I went back to new york and we had the funeral and back to la and i returned the jacket for the money <laughs> the money to pay my rent <laughs> oh <laughs> my god i bet you look great though <laughs> yeah it looked pretty good it was all right yeah but um and, and i was working at a desk job and i remember it was like in the afternoon i'm sitting there reading reading something and all of a sudden i look at my mother it was right through me like oh and i mm -hmm. i freaked out I, it was before i was a medium and, and i freaked out and i ran to the i ran out, yeah. out of the room crying i didn't know what to do well it's scary and that it's energy scary. would hit you and it would be sad i mean you'd be yeah. Yeah. overwhelming overwhelming that's the word uh, did i ever yeah. tell you that my mom and i were at a bass at a neil diamond concert where don was performing and it was we were sitting there mom and i were sitting there watching the show and then all of a sudden my mom and i both felt this energy that went right out of us through us and up and out of us and we both looked at each other and we both said at the same time my uncle has just died and our wow. my mom's brother my uncle had just died and we felt wow. the energy pull and we were at the forum i mean and he wow. was in new orleans i mean what wow. what are the odds of that you know just pulling wow. the energy pulling out it's just like the movie, which I saw the other day again, Ghost, with the movie Goldberg, yeah. who I love. And then she was chatting, oh, and it was first yeah. laugh. There is part of that sense, that feeling sometimes, for sure. Oh, it's so yeah. true. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Chris, Laramie, Sally, do we always incarnate to Earth until we learn all of Earth lessons from there and then move on? Well, I don't know. I think that there are many schools. Earth is one of the schools you learn a lot from. If you want to take the opportunities to learn, you'll take advantage of the, the the classes or you know and and you can move on but i think there are many many millions of schools so earth oh, is just one yeah. of many i and i want to say that you know if you have a long contract here some people might, some people <laughs> have might. A long some contract people here want to. <laughs> <laughs> but our contract's almost up right james <laughs> I was responsible for millions of deaths, I think, in one life, in many lifetimes as a general. And I came right. back, I think, to heal millions. Yeah, so that's a long, but, you know, we do what we have to do. To, Absolutely. You know. So this is a really interesting question from Amy Van Carver, Craver. Do souls have a preference between burial or cremation? Great question. They could care less. That's what I thought. They could care less, except I will say the fathers, many of them are pissed off for the money being spent. I will tell you that. I've had that so many times where they've come through and say, why would you waste that money? You wasted that money. You could have done so much more with that money. I've had that happen at least 30 times through the years. Oh, yeah. And it's always the, the women always want to know if they're, let's say they're laid out. They, they still do wakes, uh, what dresses they're wearing. How oh, they yeah. Make yeah. Who sent the flowers? Um, that's true. Really it's a human thing. They don't really care about funerals either, by the way. It's the humans that's for. That's all for the humans. They, they're free of it. They don't, they don't care about it. It's just it's, they don't care. <laughs> that's a really challenge. So, so, so um, Deborah Back says, "How do we know when our loved ones are around us?" Well, um, I'm going to give everyone an exercise. To do. Ooh, good. Okay? So, so tonight after our show, if you want to, what I'd like everybody to do is I'd like you to get a piece of paper out or a pad. A pen, and also uh, because it's Day of the Dead, let's do this. There's going to be a photograph. I like to have of one person. Don't put two or three because you're going to have two, you're going to be too mixed up. Just put one photograph out, okay? So let's pretend this is a photograph. This is a card I got. Okay. So let's pretend it's a photograph. I'm going to put the photograph down, and I'm going to do a couple of, like light breathing exercises. So I'm going to close my eyes, and I'll I'll just imagine as we breathe in because we breathe unconsciously, really. So breathing in love. And you can use that as a light color, a gold color, a purple color, violet color. And as I'm exhaling my mouth, I let go of fear. Breathing in love, let go of fear. Be in love, let go of fear. And as you do that and you bring love, love brings you up to a higher level. So imagine that you're like a, maybe on an elevator and you're going higher or higher. Or you're in a tree, you're climbing up this tree or you're going up a mountain. Just with every inhalation, inhalation go higher and higher. And then what I want you to do is when you get to the, let's say there's a place you get to the top of the mountain where you get to the top of the tree. Or you get to the elevator and open up the top floor, whatever it might be, where you're sitting on a cloud. Call for that loved one, the picture of that loved one. And then and slowly open up your eyes and take the pen and a piece of paper and ask them a question. Tell them, what, ask them maybe, what are you doing on the other side? How do you spend your time over there? Or something you want to ask is simple, but don't keep it complicated. Be very simple. And I want you to hold the, hand, the pen and just start writing. Don't think about writing, just start writing. Whatever comes through to you. 
whatever comes through, you might think you're making it up. Great. Just keep on writing. And it, what happens is they will, it's called overshadowing. And they will slowly impress you even more and more to start writing. You might write faster. You might not write in your own handwriting. And, but do that. And do that probably for about 10 minutes, five minutes, five to 10 minutes. And uh, you'll get a nice message from them. From that mm. spirit, or else you might get a guide come through. It works. So yeah. day of the day is your exercise. Oh, that's a really good one. It works. Um, wow. So this is a good question from Sarah Halstead. How long after the moment of death is the spirit still present? I had the blessing of being alone with my father's body for about 30 minutes after his death. It was peaceful and sacred. Okay. Again, I, Sarah, I think it's different for every single experience, but I do believe that they are with us right there at that time. They do stay around the body for a little bit. When my father passed out of his body, he, and remember, they go into a place where there's no time. So there's no linear times. There's no measurement of time. It just is. So when he left, he came back within five minutes to me and he said, he saw my mother. He knew like, there was life after death. He was in a nice brown suit. He was 27 years old. He knew he had a sister. He didn't know he had on the earth, which we all found to be true later on. So they go, they're very aware of that. And they're also on many levels, it seems. So they are there for sure. And they're still very much around their loved ones. They're trying to say to them, I'm okay. I'm alive. There's no death. I'm not dead. I'm not in that body. I'm not in that body. Please, I'm not in that body. I'm, and they're behind us. They're screaming, I'm okay. Okay. And we're so grieving and upset with that that our mind is taken with the grief that we can't hear them or feel them. That's what I find now, probably 85% of the time. It's so true. It's so true because that when you're in grief, you kind of turn off so much and they're trying to get to us so much. It's like when you're reading, and I say you can't block oh. them. You think you can block them, you can block, and the same yeah. thing. Yes, it is automatic writing. Yes, Anne, it is automatic writing. It's a form of automatic writing, definitely. Uh, Ram Janet, Dass said, yeah, oh, go ahead. Maharishni had said that when disciples begged him to leave, he said, "Where can I go? It's just my body that falls away." Ah, <laughs> great one. Oh. Loved that. Loved the explanation. It's very true. You stay, the body leaves. Very, very good, Janet. Love yeah. that. Very, very true. Because we're all around us. Is heaven. Heaven is all around us. Right. right. It just right. Us. It's just this blockage of this body, this carcass. It, it, remember my sister once made the comment, it's carrying around a suitcase. <laughs> Your body. Oh, it's an overcoat. Oh, I've heard many times spirits say, oh, take that a winter overcoat off. It's, oh, it's so great. Not, it's so great not to be held down with chains. My oh. mother, Olivia, my good friend Olivia said, oh, if I know what it was like, no, I would have done this years ago. She killed herself. She said, <laughs> She's, she was 85 years old. I said, if I knew it was like this, I would have done this years ago. <laughs> if I did, I would have killed myself years ago. She said it in jest because she realized she had to do what she had to do. But it was so funny. <laughs> and, and and she was someone who studied for years with me. We used to go see healers and mediums and so forth. And she was the one who said, when she walked into this like movie theater, her transition was she fell asleep. And she, she was aware of walking into like a movie theater, a studio, and, and people look at the screen. And, and she, she walks into the screen and she said, it was amazing. It was so animated. The flowers were becoming alive. They were opening up. It was just the most incredible experience. Colors like I'd never seen before. And there were all these people there to greet me, to welcome me. People I hadn't thought of in years. Even people that I didn't know that well, but I smiled to at once. They came wow. to greet me as well. They were all happy that I was back. Isn't that yeah. something? Let me ask you something. I had a dream the other night that was very real. I was on a train, but I wasn't supposed to be on the train. But I knew several people that were on this train that were headed uh, <laughs> south, actually. Well, my father, <laughs> before he left. Uh, okay. He, my father was, this is an interesting story. My mother was bedridden for 10 years. And then my father was bedridden for 10 years. Isn't that interesting? How really? That? And during that time, he said, I think part of that was, guilt or whatever it might who knows but uh during that time he had the dream of his my mother on a train and he was on a train he goes but you can't go it's not your time to go on that train that's what they told me on this dream <laughs> yeah it's a train is transition it is right going, going through a tunnel yeah it's a yeah. transition yeah wow. it's in the twilight zone i think there was an episode of the twilight zone by the train <laughs> oh my god that? That so Megan Prasado says, do people change after they transition? Great question. For example, if someone did terrible things on the earth, are they still that same way on the other side? I'm going to say yes, they are until they learn yeah. not to be that way. Yeah. So some would learn quicker than others, just like on the earth they learn. Um, you know, it, it's really important that we, we know down here the power of words, the energy of words and how it can hurt people. And, um, it really can hurt them. And, and you don't see the staining it does to someone. 
till you pass mm-hmm. over. You see the stains you've left behind by the words that you've used, mm-hmm. thoughts that you've had, acts that you did, ignorance that you threw. It really hurts people on levels, and you, you're like, and you're the one responsible for affecting right. all those levels based upon those words or thoughts. So words are really, really important uh, to be used in the right way. It's a responsibility to be on this earth. It's a right. responsibility here. Okay. All of us have responsibility on this earth to be here. So true. So Tammy Jackson says, how do you know what your gift is? I've been told I'm a healer, but I don't know what to do with that information. Good. So okay. Tammy, what do you think you are? <laughs> All right. oh, I was going to say, doing? let's get your classes out, James, for this. Because get the classes out. I have a healing class. Mm-hmm. I have a healing certification course, which would be good for you if you want to explore that. Um, what I would strongly suggest that I have some meditation courses too. Oh, there you go. Save time. There you go. There's a, the code for everybody. Um, you really should explore different different disciplines to see which one you resonate with. So you might resonate more with um, psychic or intuitive work or or healing or more uh, social work, for instance, more massage therapy, Reiki. I mean, there's all different modalities we should explore. Um, don't be limited by one, but there might be one that resonates stronger than others, but I think you should explore different ones. It's not right for me to say oh, you're a healer or you're this. You should find a point for yourself. Yeah. I think you have all the abilities, but you can find which one you really resonate with your soul. How does your soul express, want to express itself? And if anybody's interested in big change this month in November, James has the greatest courses in every area you can ever imagine. They're so fabulous. It would really help with transition. And this is a month of great change. And that's why we're having the sale, which is amazing. The timing it's amazing. The- it's perfect timing. Said, wow, the timing is perfect here, isn't it? Thanks, Perfect. <laughs> Divine timing. Oh. Right. It's perfect. Especially yes, with not. these eclipses that are coming. It's going to make a lot of change for people. So I have an astrology course in there also, Kelly. Perfect. Take, Take the, the astrology, astrology course. And like uh, astrology, that- aspects of things. Like mm-hmm. the moon, the moon, different types of moons. So it's all good. Debbie, it's not yours. Hi, Debbie. How do you cleanse your house good? Have tried different things. Have good spirits, bad spirits. Right? Kelly, what do you think? Well, I open up all the doors and windows. I open up everything. Now, some right. people take out, uh, you know, uh, sage and they walk around and all that. Um, you know, just have happy thoughts, good thoughts, you know, pr- prayers, blessings of anybody who's around that it's time for them to go. But, and, um, I, I Gary, I did that. I just did it Saturday, and you did. I, I did, and I lit sage, and I went through every around every window and every door and every crack of the house. And but before I did that, I played lovely, beautiful music. I opened all the windows. That's I perfect. Light, and I, I I said prayers, and I just brought love into that house. And another thing I tend to do too is I'll meditate where I bring light into that house, mm-hmm. and, I, and I see very grounded the whole house, and I bring light and any heavy energies that are in the house are being pulled down to Mother Earth. Same thing I do my morning ritual of cleansing my body, I also cleanse the house that way. And I've done it. And I've had people say to me, what are you doing with the na- neighbors that say, what do you do with your house? What, what, what you, things look different here. I said, oh. And or people come to me into my house and say, wow, the energy here is just out of so, world. So you, unbelievable. Great you went oh, recently. Come on, you, it's fabulous energy. When Shirley walked in, our oh, friend. <laughs> Shirley just walked in and she said, oh, the energy here. She couldn't get over it. Yeah. I mean, two steps in the door, she was blown away. And she's like, yeah. whoa, the energy. Wow. And you and I looked at each other like, because we knew she would be like, but that was really amazing. Totally. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, good I good music and sage. They're really liking that. Remember, your thoughts are important. So keep your thoughts on mm-hmm. a high level. You're only the bad bad things because you're giving them bad. You're, you're thinking they're bad spirits. You're giving that energy of negativity. Right. Right? Play right. positive. Everything is love. Right. Fear is human. Fear is, is made from humans, not spirit. You're love. Oh, my gosh. Well, and everybody enjoy Day of the Dead. Today and yes, tomorrow. Day Still goes till tomorrow. Goes to tomorrow. And do that little assignment. I think that will help everybody in first time to do it. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks, Thanks James. James. Thanks, Thanks Renee. everybody. Thanks, for Renee. I appreciate your help. Thank you, everybody. Nice to see everyone. New people, too. Good. Spread the word. Bye, everybody. Bye. You've been listening to Both Sides Now and Beyond, featuring spiritual medium and master teacher James Van Prog and spiritual medium and psychotherapist Kelly White. The James and Kelly Show.